You know what separates a topper from an average student in the INICET? It's knowing exactly what to focus on. General pathology is the foundation where every tricky question hides a twist. Miss the question and you miss the rank. Master them and you know how to control the game. Hi, I'm Dr. Sahil Dhingra, All India Rank 1 November INICT 2021 from Team Meritors. Today in this video, I am going to break it down step by step the hacks for general pathology and how to understand rather than memorize every topic. Let's start. So step one is to know the syllabus. Now in general pathology syllabus, there are a total of seven chapters. Starting from your cell in health and disease to inflammation, immunity and hypersensitivity followed by healing. Fluid and hemodynamic disorders, growth disorders and neoplasia, diseases of blood and lymph nodes and the systemic pathology and the miscellaneous. Now I will be telling you topic wise what all are the important areas in those chapters. Now step two is to study what matters. So first chapter is your cell in health and disease. So in cell you have to read reversible and irreversible injuries to begin with. So you have to know the difference. You need to know the difference between reversible versus irreversible type of cell injury. In this, they will ask a lot of times which of the following is a irreversible cell death or which of the following is a reversible cell death. And you have to choose the odd one out, the correct option. Similarly, they will ask a lot of questions from necrosis and apoptosis. In apoptosis, you need to know the mechanism behind the pathogenesis of apoptosis. In necrosis, you need to cover the five types of necrosis, the coagulative, liquefactive, caseous, etc. Then, other than this, there is one more important aspect in this chapter, the cell. That is your calcification. Dystrophic and metastatic calcification. Again, you need to know the difference between the two. And they will ask most of the times they will give you which of the following is a dystrophic or which of the following is a metastatic. And they will you have to you just have to remember the examples for these two. So you can pick the correct answer. These are the very basic questions. This you must know. And there is to an extent there is something called gangrene also, which comes in this chapter in this part. Then next is your. Inflammation. And immunity along with your hypersensitivity. Now, as I told you earlier in the microbiology video that the from this immunity part, mostly the hypersensitivity reactions and the antigen antibody reactions you have to read from your micro because they are given much more in detail in the microbiology textbooks. When it comes to pathology, Mostly you have to focus on your inflammatory mediators. The inflammatory mediators are your cytokines, the interleukins, IL-1, IL-2, IL-6, like that, and your chemoattractants or the chemotactic agents. These are the things you have to focus on. There is one table given in your textbook where you will find that which of the following inflammatory mediator has what role. For example, bradykinin increases the vascular permeability. So you have to learn that table there because what will happen in AIMS is I'll tell you the kind of questions they will ask. They will ask you which of the following is a opsonin. So C3B, C5B, these are the opsonins. Similarly, which of the following is a chemoattractant? So C3A, C5A. So that this everything is given in the table. Then they will ask you one one very important question. What they usually ask is which of the following will increase vascular permeability again bradykinin or they can ask which of the following does not increase the vascular permeability. Similarly, in interleukins, they can ask you which of the following is a anti inflammatory IL. So IL-4 and IL-10 are the ones which are anti-inflammatory. Rest all are pro-inflammatory. Those will cause bone resorption. And these parts you will cover to an extent in your periodontology also. So everything is going to link from the inflammation and immunity part. This is one of the very important chapters for your INICT as well as for your need MDS. And you can club this from perio 
micro the general pathology everywhere you will find questions on inflammation and immunity third is your healing in this you only have to read one topic there is only one topic in this chapter the factors affecting wound healing again this wound healing part would be covered in your general surgery also so you can either do this from here or in more depth you will get it in your general surgery textbooks then after this we have the fluid the fourth chapter here in patho is fluid and hemodynamics now here you have to focus on shock in shock the one common question asked in aims is the percentage of blood loss so there is a classification for hemorrhagic shock where they will tell you that for example more than 40% blood loss is a class 4 hemorrhagic shock so you need to know classes 1 to 4 what is the amount of blood loss like one of the classes has 15 to 30% then one has 30 to 40 then the class 4 has more than 40% blood loss so from this they will ask you basic questions from shock again shock in more detail you will be doing in general surgery so again you see pathology everything is linked some is linked to micro some is linked to general surgery then in the fluid part you have thrombosis your thrombus and embolism firstly you need to know difference between thrombosis and embolism then in the thrombosis you need to know the virtuous triad this is a very important question in aims the virtuous triad so they can ask you either what are the three components or they can ask you which of the following is not a component where they will give you the triad and one option will be something else from this the thrombosis embolism part is the most important in the this thing we have deep vein thrombosis dvt which is not going to be read here though that you have to read in general surgery next is the neoplasia the growth disorders and the neoplasia this after let's say immunity this is one of the most important topics of general path because mostly this topic will be covered only in general path so you have to do it in detail from general path itself here the most important questions are your tumor suppressor genes very famous question in aims is which of the following is not a tumor suppressor gene and they will give you four options three would be tumor suppressor genes one would be the opposite of it so you have to choose that one similarly again in neoplasia benign versus malignant you need to know what are the characteristics of a malignancy and what are the characteristics of a benign tumor so they will ask you examples that which of the following has more potential more cells those differences they will be asking you and you have to rule out which is malignant feature which is benign feature apart from this the trisomies and the monosomies are very important the genetic anomalies they will ask the mutations which disease or which syndrome has a trisomy 13 for example or a trisomy 21 so you need to know the most important syndromes like your edwards syndrome patau syndrome down syndrome lifram oni syndrome so they will ask you which of the following has a p53 gene mutation so you need to know all these things in neoplasia then next is your blood and lymph nodes blood and lymph nodes again very important but here you have only three things you have to focus on first is your leukemias in leukemia you need to know all the four types your aml cml all and cll so for example they will ask you which of the following is exclusively found in children so or they can ask you something about a cml they will ask a typical histological feature of a cml then you need to know okay this feature is seen in cml similarly they will ask lymphomas both hodgkins and non hodgkins 
For example, they will ask uh, where which of the following disease shows are read Sternberg cells. So these are very basic questions, but you need to read them only then you can answer. And the anemias, the different types of anemias. So from the blood and lymph nodes, you will be only reading three topics, but you have to read all the three in detail. Leukemia, lymphoma and your anemias. Next is the systemic pathology and the miscellaneous. Now this becomes very important because in this we have covered a few systemic pathologic diseases also, but mostly it has the past year repeats. Now when we say the past year repeats, so for example, what all topics I have told you that they will ask this from this chapter. When you open this miscellaneous, you will find a lot of questions of from what I have told you being there. For example, which is not a tumor suppressor gene. So one of one such question would definitely be there in our miscellaneous. So when you do the miscellaneous, you will come to know what is the trend in the past INICT in the past AIMS papers. That is how you will develop that. OK, this is important. This I have to focus more upon. And as a rule of thumb, general pathology during the last two and a half months now, you should only focus, try to cover the entire syllabus in, let's say, four days. So how you will cover in four days? You start, I'll tell you that after the presentation, after the slides are over. So next is step three. Minimum last five years of question papers from the aims. That is last 10, last 10 papers. So twice every year. Then step four is the special questions. Again, you will find the image based and the special question set, which mostly has the medical repeats when it comes to the pathology. And the medical repeats are very, very important here. And at least twice or thrice you have to revise. Now how to read patho is you have to link with the other subjects. Now if you link the patho, then you can cover a part of general surgery. You can cover a part of microbiology also which means specifically general surgery. Two to three topics are common between general surgery and this like DBT, like shock. So what will happen now is once you read with general surgery, the general surgery coverage for you will be less. So you will, you can save one day of general surgery there if you have read it along with pathology. And pathology is something where you have to understand rather than cram. So that is why in pathology, most important thing is you have to read in tabular format. For example, dystrophic versus metastatic calcification, benign versus malignant tumor. Pathology is entirely based on your understanding. And even in the growth disorders, you will see the dysplastic, metaplastic, anaplastic. So you need to know the differences between these three. Pathology is mostly about terminology. If you know the basic terminology for, uh, I'll give you a very simple example. For example, itis means inflammation. If uh, you ask any medical student, they should know that itis means inflammation. So from anything you add ITs in front of any word, it becomes that that part is inflamed. So these are the things in pathology. If you understand the very, very basic that, OK, what is ITs? So you can derive from that that, OK, this is the word ITs is there at the end. So this is probably an inflammation of this body part. Similarly, the last advice is. The systemic pathology do not cover so much in detail for the systemic path because this is mostly for the MBBS students. If you avoid this too much depth here, you can easily cover the remaining chapters within four to five days. Now at last I will tell you. How to cover each chapter so you can maximize your preparation within these four days. Start from the basic part, the cell. First you do cell. Now in cell, you will do the general basic general pathology aspects in the necrosis, apoptosis, cell death. Then you move on to the. Growth disorders and the neoplasia. After cell, you do neoplasia again. Why? Because these are the two most important chapters which are only covered here in your pathology. Now when you move on to the diseases of blood and lymph nodes, another important tip is next you go for blood. In blood and lymph nodes, this will be covered in general medicine also. When you do general medicine, you will realize that Hodgkin's lymphoma is there also. Anemias are also there in general medicine. Then fluid and hemodynamics. This you can cover with your general surgery. 
and the inflammation immunity part will be covered in your microbiology. From patho, I have told you what are the most important tables for inflammation you need to know. And the miscellaneous is very, very important because it has your medical repeats. And the general path miscellaneous, if you see in the app, it is around 350 questions, which is huge. So 350 high yield questions you are getting just from that extra cover. So this is it for general pathology. The key is again, this is a subject where they will ask around six to seven questions. So you can cover everything except the systemic pathology. Systemic pathology, if they ask you one or two questions, best to not attempt those questions, leave those questions. But pathology is a high yielding subject as compared to something like a microbiology. There is not mo more of facts. The pathology is based more on understanding. So pathology is like you can derive. OK, this is metaplastic. This is dystrophic from those words itself. The most of the things will be derived. Pathology is more of an understanding based subject, not a cramming based subject. Always remember. With this, we come to the end of this video. Hope you like the content and if you want to watch more such videos, do subscribe on our YouTube channel and follow us on, a, on Instagram. And if you have not yet downloaded the Meritus app, you can go to the Play Store or the App Store and download the app. Thank you and all the best for your upcoming INICT exam.